Hello, hello everyone. Linux SFS file systems. Let's talk with the board using the SFS. Maybe we can start with that. Uh, how we can access the system information and then uh, how we can write into the peripheral and how we can read back the information using the SFS. Basically, SFS is something like. Uh, uh, we can say it's a pseudo and virtual, yeah, virtual file system, similar to ProcFS basically. ProcFS contains limited set of data. Instead of that, SysFS contains more information about this system, bus, and then devices, and then different kind of classes and different kind of files file system and a different kind of network and different kind of process all the informations we can able to see using the sysfs basically sysfs provides an interface to interact with the kernel data structures basically whenever we are using that uh, driver developing a driver maybe we can provide that user access to read back. For example, um, maybe we can take an example of temperature sensor. We can we have to give three things maybe that the value, current value, minimum and maximum threshold. The maximum and minimum and maximum threshold can be written and read back and then uh, the value, the current value of the sensor that we have to we is the only option of reading. Something similar to that, according to that our need, the SysFS can be used as a read or write, basically. And also it provides the complete information about that devices, kernel modules, and then file systems, basically. And it has commonly mounted in the class SysFS, Sys, and also you can manually mount that uh, SysFS file system in the root, root mode using mount hyphen t sysfs sysfs slash sys and it has the different arguments that you can define in your linux kernel drivers that will allow that write or read that kernel variables based on the parameters and uh, basically it involves more symbolic links so that for example a yeah, bus can have a device the device can be present in the bus so that all the things will go and link accordingly yeah that we will see you basically and uh, we have the different files and directories that we can able to see something like sys block maybe we can see here i have that udo terminal over here maybe i can go to sys and we have the block that it contains block devices information Maybe we can see I have the block inside the block. There is multiple loop devices which can be used for looping, uh, creating a virtual block systems basically. And we have MMC block zero, which is that uh, our micro SD card basically. Here we can see that our MMC block zero got mounted over here in the boot and then mmc dev root is is the mmc p2 partition 2 that got mounted as a root file system basically yeah here then we have that bus directory in that bus directory we will be having the buses which are all registered inside the kernels for example if you have for example, you might not have the PCIe on your system, but if you just enabled in the Linux kernel, then it will be visible over here. For example, here it was a customized for you to new, then it will it should contain only that particular buses available here. For example, we have the clock events, we have the clock source, we have the container, and we have the information related to the CPU. Maybe we can check inside the CPU something like bus then cpu we have that information about 
probe all those things and we have that event source in case of input event and we have the HID, we have the I2C bus, we have that IIO bus and we have that MMC bus, we have the platform based bus and we have that SCSI bus and we have the SDIO and we have that serial IO which is the PCIe and the SPI we have serial peripheral interface and we have the USB universal serial bus and then work queues will be simulated as a bus in the Linux architecture basically that was the bus we have seen and we can say that class different kind of classes it contains basically for example it can be a backlight to the LCD it can be a Bluetooth it can be a GPIO it can be a MDIO bus for the Ethernet or it can be a display it can be a thermal sensor it can be a video for Linux to get that capture capture the frames and we have the different kind of classes available TTY for a terminal and we have that sound here for that to record or playback the audios and we have the real-time clock and we have the PWM we have the PTP different kind of classes all the kind of classes are available over here that we can utilize maybe we can see in detail little more further and we have the GPIO general purpose IO that we can able to use that to access that uh, corresponding GPIO basically that we will see over here and we have that similar to that we have the dev which contains two based in the first session we have seen we have three type of device drivers first one is character and second one is block and third one is network driver here we have two types of dev it was accessible by the sysfs that one one is block and second one is character that can be accessible and we have the devices which contains the system devices available over here and we have that firmware which contains here we does not anything it does not have anything maybe here we will be contain mostly containing that wi-fi or pcie cord adapter kind of firmware that we will be keeping here and uh, the kernel module will be using this to load into that uh, file load into that uh, wi-fi wi-fi model to work accordingly make it working properly and we have that fs that file system related and we have ext4 and fuse file system and c group file systems and we have that fsl otp which something like one time programmable fuses of i.mx that can be accessible using these files and we have linux kernel related informations that we have having here and we have the module for example whenever we are ins mode anything we will be getting uh, one folder created in that name thus for example i can show that maybe here we can go cd oh, sorry cd slash projects no it's not in projects i may be in ldd i uh, hello and then i have to do something like in small so that i can get it over there uh, you do yeah maybe lss then modules i will be getting hello over here whenever we install the module we will be getting that that corresponding folder will be created for that module with that information once we are a mod that folder will be will not be available maybe we can see over here i did maybe it does not have anything yeah something similar to that and we can have it something different we can have that informations something like power which contains different power states maybe uh, the power states that we can able to see here that power state it contains freeze standby and mem and then we can do that vacuum count and we can do that time for the test all those things we can able to configure sysfs basically sysfs is basically a virtual file system which runs over the memory 
and uh, we can uh, it has been used by the kernel data structures in the drivers or Linux kernel that will provide an access that will provide an provide the interface to the user space to access its data structures so that whenever it access that corresponding actions will taken care will be done inside the Linux kernel data uh, Linux kernel and device drivers for example if you have that set temperature that minimum threshold that will be get updated ac accordingly so, and when we do that read for that file for example temperature then that corresponding temperature will be read from the sensor and will be given as a result to us basically it provides a simpler interface to the user space to access the kernel structures which is easier to access basically for the layman this is a simple introduction about the CSFS. Thank you for watching. You can contact me at nvhariharan at the rate of nevitech.com and subscribe for more updates. Thank you. Have a nice day.